Good afternoon, this is Engineer Raul Kam of the City Planning and Development Office. I am here to present to all of you the current socio-economic profile of our city. The city of Ormoc is a first-class independent component city with 110 villages or barangays under its jurisdiction. It is located on the northwestern coastal plain of Leyte Island in the Philippines with a total land area of 464.30 square kilometers. Ormoc plays important development roles in the province of Leyte and the eastern Visayas region. We were identified as a center for manufacturing, commerce and trade, education, culture and ecotourism, and transportation being a gateway city because of its strategic location. We were also identified as a regional center in eastern Visayas along with our region's capital, Tacloban City, in the Regional Development Plan 2017-2022. In addition, Ormoc is identified as one of the three major growth centers for the region and one of the key urban centers comprising the core zone for the proposed establishment of the Leyte Ecological Industrial Zone. Based on the 2017 Annual Financial Report for the Local Government released by the Department of Finance last November 2018, Ormoc City has the highest total assets among the seven cities in Eastern Visayas to the tune of 5.9 billion pesos, surpassing the region's capital city. Although predominantly agricultural, our city's economic base is transitioning into a good mix of agri-fishery, industry, tourism, and commercial services following our spatial development strategy and long-term vision. The city was gaining momentum in meetings, incentives, conventions, and exhibits or MICE Tourism as we held annual events that have been building up in attendance and increasing tourist arrivals in the last couple of years before the COVID-19 pandemic. This has vast potential for market growth in our city, together with our thriving ecotourism as we gear up for the development of our natural spots. In terms of labor and employment, Ormoc City has a 96.1% employment rate in 2018 based on NEDA reports. Some 7,000 households earn their livelihood tending to their respective small farm lots as a huge chunk of our land use is devoted to agriculture. The tertiary economy, however, proves to be robust with some 23,200 registered employees comprising 20% of our entire workforce who are engaged in retail and services. A small percentage work at manufacturing, banks or financial institutions, and the city government. Over time, more economic activities have taken place, evident in the rapid growth of business establishments, financial institutions, and infrastructure. The city government, through our micro, small, and medium enterprise development council, formulated and implemented a strategic plan for the advancement of our local business sector. Despite the threat of the pandemic, capability development activities for the MSMEs, investment promotions, and support services like business counseling through the Negocio Center and crafting of their business continuity plans push through. Trade and investment are some of the priority development agendas of the current administration with the leadership of Mayor Richard Gomez. As we recognize the valuable contribution of the business sector in the local economic growth, the city government continues to provide an enabling environment for the business to thrive. In compliance with the ease of doing business law, the city developed an in-house electronic business permit and licensing system to integrate various processes and fees from regulatory offices and government agencies. This reduces over-the-counter transactions certain skews and waiting time, and eradicates red tape practices. Consequently, providing a better way of doing business in the city. Launching this online system was timely with the unprecedented impacts of the COVID-19 pandemic. At the comfort and safety of their homes and office, business owners can apply and pay for their permits online. The initiative also adopts the zero-contact policy as the electronic printable copy of their business permits are sent via email. We expect to increase usage of the system among business owners 
for new applications and renewal in the succeeding year. Ormoc City also poses for local investment incentives to attract more investors to come and invest in the city. The existing investment incentives codes has so far granted tax holidays of two years to two business firms operating in the city. With this, an endorsement to amend to widen the scope and add more qualifiers to the list of investment priority area is underway. Proposed amendments include incentivizing location-based investments and businesses that consider green development approaches, DRRM practices, and climate change adaptation and mitigation strategies. This is really bad because Ormoc City has been threatened by its climate and disaster risks due to climate change. The city is prone to floods, rain-induced landslides, typhoons and storm surges, ground rupture and earthquakes that may result in liquefaction and tsunamis. Areas that are most exposed are the villages along the coast including the city center and the production areas. Climate change compels us to use a climate lens for risk-informed development planning. Our climate risk assessment shows that increased rainfall would lead to flooding, which is considered the most impactful risk of the city. On the other hand, considering the density of structures and people, the concentration of heat in urban centers is expected in the coming years. To achieve resilience, we follow citywide adaptation strategies to gather comprehensive benefits. In terms of the natural environment, our coastal and upland forests have to be restored, preserved and rehabilitated. We are presently doing this with our stakeholders from both government and private sector as well as the academy because we believe that development should not be pursued at the expense of the environment. In the built environment, we aim to follow mixed-use area development aligned with our multi-nodal development Public structures and private properties should employ resilient techniques and approaches. This is why we make sure that new buildings follow the standards set in the National Building Code. Ormoc City is also kick-starting a green economy with the installation of solar panels in our public buildings, the use of energy-saving LED lights on our streets, and employing electric vehicles to reduce our carbon footprint and greenhouse gas emissions. In addressing flooding, we aim to manage water in different approaches. It will be demonstrated by increasing permeable surfaces using combined engineering and nature-based solutions on drainage system and forging action from the community. Further, in the urban center, the use of heat-adaptive structures has to be augmented by expanding public open green spaces, which will also encourage active mobility. More importantly, we aim to continue building institutional capacities to perform inclusive climate action planning down to our communities and households. On this premise, we employ participatory governance and multi-stakeholder approach through our current partnerships with UN Habitat, National Resilience Council, OML Center, and the PPP Center for our Water Supply Project, to name a few. With the pandemic and the climate crisis the world is facing, as well as the water stress we are experiencing, we aim to ensure availability and sustainable management of water and sanitation for our constituents through this water supply project. This and all the other development efforts we do at a local level align with national plans and contribute to the achievement of global goals and commitments like the Paris Agreement and the Sustainable Development Goals as we plan for a resilient and green recovery from COVID-19 and climate change.